Okay, as you saw by the title of today's video, let's talk about how experiencing, directly experiencing of the numinous, the divine, is healing, can be healing. Something I wrote, I'll read you, something I wrote, and I actually posted this on social media yesterday, but I wrote this a few years ago. Um, and uh, I'll read you the uh, little bit, it's only, you know, two paragraphs, three paragraphs. Then I'll give you examples of coming to the numinous or in front of or having direct experiences of the numinous. And these experiences of the numinous are usually by women. Men, men do have experiences, you know, men do dream. We all dream, there is no exceptions. We all have dreams. But the deeper, the real experiences coming to the archetypal are usually, excuse me, by women and especially of the divine feminine, of the, sac of the sacred feminine. It is usually women. As you might also uh, know, I have, uh, uh, I interpret dreams and visions for people. People come and bring the usually dreams, sometimes visions to me, and I have one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. And I, I can tell you from my own experience with working with people that the it is only women that are bringing dreams to me or visions. I am yet to interpret one dream that has been actually brought to me by a man. So it is usually, and it is usually the, the big dreams that women bring, the coming to the numinous, experiencing the numinous, the archetypal, what, you, what Jung would have called the collective unconscious. Yeah? So I'll read you what I wrote there, make a few comments, and I'll give you some examples of these big dreams, you know, of these big archetypal dreams, because what we're talking about, the collective unconscious, we're talking about the feminine. Yeah, the masculine, like I said, is your rational mind, the visible reality, culture, society. <coughs> and that's, uh, that's the personal unconscious. And the collective unconscious is deeper. It is collective to us, to all of humanity regardless of religion, tradition, regardless of race, regardless of geographical location. It is still lives deep within us and it's collective. That's the feminine. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I wrote. Healing isn't when you, when you are told about divinity. I might put my glasses on. I've been sitting in front of the computer all morning. Healing isn't when you are told about divinity. Right. Or when you read about it or even when you make the pilgrimage to some holy place. That's right. But rather, when you make that pilgrim pilgrimage inward and backward, all the way to the center, to the collective center, beyond the wall of duality, conditioned ego dropped, and have a numinous living mystic experience of the most inward center, and live, and live through the meeting of the eyes as identity with their divinity. You have met, you have gone to the center and to the temple within you and you have an experience, numinous experience of the deity. But to really know what, uh, what a juicy pear is like, you don't read about someone else's experience of eating one, you eat one yourself. Yeah, that's, that's a great example, right? So this is, uh, the, the being exposed to the numinous is automatically healing. This is what Jung wrote, and I'll tell you a little bit about Jung in a minute. The main interest of my work is not concerned with the treatment of neurosis, but rather with the approach to the numinous. Having your own experience of the, of the divine. But the fact is that the approach to the numinous is the real therapy and as much as you attain to the numinous experience you are released from the curse of pathology Jung, C.G. Jung yeah exactly it is 
coming to the humanness, coming to actually having that deeper experience of the archetypal, <coughs> of the sacred, that is healing. Um, but you also, if the dream is uh, speaking in its own language of the soul, in its symbolic language of the soul, you might still need someone to help you to understand that uh, 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 language, that, uh, that symbolic language, you know, the, the tree, the water, uh, the flame, and there are colors, there are numbers uh, climbing up to the apex of a tree. These, these are all symbolic and these are all, these are all language of the soul. They, they all repeat throughout our culture. So you need someone to really be able to uh, help you with understanding these dreams, these, these big experiences, so that you can get the best um, um, you know, healing out of that. So you can know that what you have experienced is really coming to the, to the numinous and then make, um, uh, be able to integrate this and then make that part of your everyday life. Yeah, because the, 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 usually coming to the numinous, there will be a message for you in some way, uh, which gives you a new direction in life. Like I said, many of, most of the really big dreams that are, all of the big dreams that are coming to me, for instance, to interpret uh, for people are women. And they bring, some bring really big archetypal dreams, really big uh, experiences of the numinous, of the sacred, of the sacred feminine. It is also said very often, perhaps not in the Jungian community, that uh, a lot of the dreams, a lot of the visions that are attributed to Jung are really uh, belong to his patients. Not his, but his patients. And his, most of his patients were women. So there you go, you know. Women have these really huge experiences, really huge archetypal experiences. Why? Because they have, they have the feminine energy. They haven't rejected it. They, they, the, the women still uh, cherish the, their feminine energy. And the feminine energy is your life force, which is your intuition. Like I keep repeating, the core of the feminine is intuition. Women are because they haven't secret, but patriarchy, the, the masculine mind rejects all this because only, <clears throat> only the rational mind is important. Only the scripture, only the books, only what the science finds, only what the experts say, authorities say, your own personal experiences are not important. They, you have no proof that it's real. The only proof is out there. There is no proof within you, but women haven't lost that. We men have because we have been exposed to the education system for hundreds of years now, for thousands of years, since we've started to learn to write <coughs> and priests took over the, uh, the, the writing in the temples, things instead of being experienced directly were written down. And then we started to memorize things. Then we get scripture and we get books, we get worship of books and rules and laws rather than your own personal experience. Women haven't had that. They have been suppressed for such a long time. They didn't have access to education, didn't have access to writing. They had to do that in secret. So they haven't really lost the um, access to their own inner resources, their own intuition, their own dreams and visions. So most of the people that are coming to see me having a one-on-one -on -one session or interpret the dreams or work with them to interpret the dreams or visions of women. And like I said, in the case of C.G. Jung, and I, I have a quote somewhere that he also said that without the women, the women around him and the patients, his work would have never happened. So a lot of the, a lot of the work, a lot of the dreams and visions that are actually, you know, being attributed to Jung are not his, they are his patients, his women patients. Now I want to share with you a few dreams, a few uh, experiences of this uh, direct experience of the numinous by women and how that has changed their lives. First experience is from Anne Baring. You possibly, you have heard me talk about Anne before. She is a Jungian analyst and a historian. She has, she is one of the voices for the sacred feminine. She's a, quite a famous person now. 
she's in her 90s and she's, she's one of the voices, one of the very strong voices for the sacred feminine. And uh, the first dream that she had, I'll have two for, for you to, uh, to share with you. The first one is when she met in therapy, I think it was, Jules Cashford. And Jules, Jules Cashford, I think she's too a Jungian. And when the two women met briefly, um, you know, they struck up a relationship straight away. They, they got along really well. And it was shortly after their meeting that both of them had a similar dream, or you could say the same dream. And in the dream, they were told that they have to, their task together is to rebuild the destroyed or the lost temple to the sacred feminine. So the two women got together and wrote one of the probably most or more famous books regarding the recovery of the sacred feminine, The Myth of the Goddess, Anne Baring and Jules Cashford. This is my copy. You can see it's well worn <laughs> and, it's, and it's written everywhere. This is how I do my work. You see everything is underlined and something speaks to me. I will I will, uh, you know, make a little poem, a little uh, make a make a little um, uh, post on on Facebook or somewhere. When when I'm centered, when I'm working, and I'm just reading and I'm underlining, things come, you know, intuitively things come. So this is the first experience, not the first experience, you know. Uh, Anne speaks about a lot of dreams, a lot of experiences. Uh, coming to the numinous, but this was one of the big ones where she had life has changed. She knew she had to dedicate herself to being a spokesperson for the divine from the sacred feminine. You know, her task was to uh, help rebuild the temple together with Jules Cashford. Jules Cashford. So that the first attempt was to write the book, The Myth of the Goddess. And also talks about. Uh, um, uh, another uh, dream um, very often which has a huge impact on her uh, in, in, on her life which has really concrete concreted her dedication to being a spokesperson for the sacred feminine and this is the dream she comes out from behind a dolmen a dolmen is, an, is a stone age uh, uh, grave you know with a with a with a um, roof and, 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 and walls, stone roof and stone walls and, and there would have been body buried inside and the bodies are all long gone but the dolmen still remain. So she's coming out from behind this and then she's, then she's floating in the air, her feet just barely touching corn. Corn has grown and is green and she just, you know, floating above corn, her feet just barely touching the corn, and she suddenly comes into a valley where she's caught in a net, a huge net. To the left, to the right, the net is held by huge men. She's lying on her back, she's looking up to the sky, and she sees a woman, a great big woman with flowing hair, naked woman standing over her. And she sees that this woman has a, a, a vortex, um, you know, a circle on, in her stomach. And Anne realizes that she too has such a circle. She too has such a spiral on her stomach, but hers is far to the left. This woman, the sacred feminine, this goddess indicates to Anne that, her, that, that Anne's circle, Anne's spiral needs to be more balanced and in line with hers in the center. Yeah, so after that dream, you know, Anne often speaks about these dreams uh, uh, to this day because it made such an impact. You know, she, this concrete, the, the, this, the, this dream has made her, this coming to the numinous, in front of the numinous, I mean, this is coming in front of the goddess, of, in front of the divine feminine, sacred feminine, and she's instructing her what to do. You see, and she and realized that this idea of the sacred feminine is not merely just an abstract idea you can find in perhaps in scripture or in books, but it's real. It still lives deep within our psyche, with our, within our collective psyche. Because she could, you know, if you if you looked at mythology and so on, you would find the same symbology. The women, uh, you know, the, the sacred feminine usually long flowing hair, like in my dreams. 
the spiral is one of her symbols as well like in my dreams when i was taken by this <coughs> woman this <coughs> this um, um egyptian princess ancient egyptian princess underwater and through the spiral through the center to the other side so these are collective images just like the corn growing as well you know when you when you have managed to, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're when you're centered, when you're intuitively centered, the life begins, begun, begins to grow again. It's perhaps spring, flowers are blooming, you know, the corn is growing, the grass is growing, the flowers are blooming. You might be up somewhere up in the mountains and climbing. These are all, uh, you know, collective to us symbology. All over the world, it's exactly the same. You know the dolmen, the uh, the the uh, uh, <coughs> the symbol of the grave coming out of the grave. You know, being being awakened out of the dead. Dead means you 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 are still stuck in the rational mind, in the ego, in the society. You're not flowing. You're not using your intuition. You know, you're not being centered. You're still out there and and just thinking and and remembering and quoting and whatnot. But you're not using your own inner resources. The feminine, the goddess, the flowing hair. You know, that's the feminine energy. So that's another example of coming to the numinous. You know, and being touched by the numinous instructions coming to you about your life direction, what you need to do to be balanced, to be healed. So coming to the numinous is healing. Uh, another dream is uh, from uh, Betty Kovacs. Betty is a was one of. The, she's also Jungian. She was, a, uh, or perhaps still is, a chair of some 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 Jungian association in the U.S. Uh, she was or still is a professor of mythology, I think. And she had she had many dreams, and she talks about them openly during her interviews. But uh, one that struck me is when she um, saw in a vision the feminine, the sacred feminine, walking through a, a desert-like landscape or war-torn landscape. This was what the patriarchy did to nature, to her, to her culture, to the, the culture of the sacred feminine. You know, war destroyed, destroyed her temples, destroyed her sacred groves, destroyed her memory, destroyed her, her, her uh, direct experiences, you know, the, destroyed her mystic side. Destroyed her, you know, vision, the ability to have visions, the ability to have, you know, dreams and so on, because that was not allowed for a very long time. And she's walking through this landscape, and she says, "This cannot, this can't be healed. This can never be healed." Yeah. So Betty became also uh, an important spokesman after this experience. She became an open, um, important spokesman for the sacred feminine, for the divine feminine. Another um, uh, experience of Betty is um, when she talks about a dream, she is in a museum and she's looking at, the, uh, she's looking at all the artifacts. <laughs> she's admiring these artifacts and then she sees the Anubis, you know, the ancient Egyptian god the psychopomp, the one that takes the souls of the dead to the afterlife, to be to the center, to be to, to, to realize who they really are, you know, divine, divine. And he's sitting there alone in, you know, just in a meditative posture. So she goes along, she said, oh, I'm not going to disturb him. I'm going to go along and look at these artifacts. And suddenly she's looking at the artifacts. Suddenly she, he's standing there beside her. And he says, you can look at the artifacts if you like. But I can teach you everything you want to know about them. See? And then she, says, she, she kind of looked at him and she said, Who are you? I am the, I am the void. I am the all. The voice replied. You know, you, there, you can, you know, that's the feminine. That's the sacred feminine. The way of the sacred feminine. The way of the masculine is, you know, you can look at the artifacts. You can memorize their names, you can memorize the, where they're from, you can memorize the quotes, you can memorize the facts and the dates. But, I can teach you everything you want to know about them. Directly experience. What, what do you want to know? 
stay with the question and the question will be and the answer will be given back to you it will given given to you in a dream like i've shared with on so many videos already my own experiences and the experience of others <coughs> Yeah, that's Betty's experience and, uh, you know, she talks about this dream very often. I'll share with you one more from Anne Bering. Anne, before she became a historian or even a Jungian, she had her own shop in London, I believe, where she was making, hand-making evening gowns for women. You know, when you went to dinner in the old days, you would, a woman would dress a long, beautiful gown, evening gown, yeah? And Anne was, she was designing these gowns and making them, yeah. <clears throat> and she, in one of her dreams, the, 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 she is working in her, in her studio, in, in her boutique, in her shop. But the, mis the, the seamstress, the one who is in, in charge of this uh, shop, the one that designs and the one that gives the, her ideas and stuff, is... Um, a female figure with a with, with a with a dog's head. She is the one, the nose that knows, you know. She is the intuition that gives, that gave, and that 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 gave, and the whole um, idea, the whole, uh, you know, she was giving her the answers, the, the 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 help with running the shop. That's the image of the feminine. One of the oldest images of the feminine is is dog, especially white dog. We see it as far as the, the Neolithic, the goddess. The goddess. The goddess had the, in, was in three parts. She was goddess of 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 life, of death, and of regeneration. And the one that uh, came uh, as death before regeneration came uh, was often seen as uh, skinny and white, and and had an it was accompanied by a white dog. Yeah. Um, so I'll give you one more example while I'm here. I know, oh, okay, it's 20 minutes. So give you one more example from someone. Um, uh, this is actually my wife's dream. This was years ago. And in the dream, she's walking in a landscape. This is a rural landscape somewhere in, in, uh, in, uh, in the countryside. And she's walking, walking up to, uh, walking alone, and she walked up to a bush, a tree, and the tree was on fire. And, but the fire wasn't consuming the tree. It was a blue flame. It was silent. She said there was no voice. There was no nothing. There was just this uh, fire uh, slowly burning from the, from, from the tree. So there's your burning bush, you know. Uh, the, the, the Moses experienced the burning bush on the mountain didn't he? And the voice of God, angel, spoke to Moses through that. So there's the, you know, she's walking along on this uh, lonely way in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the rural landscape. She comes up to this tree. This is the threshold. She's about to pass the tr threshold to somewhere sacred. And when she left the tree, the tree kept burning the blue flames. She left it behind and she comes up to a mountain. And the mountain slopes are uh, she said they were filled with sand, so it was very, very difficult for her to go up, but eventually she makes, she says, the, the more I climbed, I would climb a little, I would slide down, I would climb a little, I would slide down. The journey to the center is difficult to go to the other side. It's difficult, but you can, well, you know, it's possible to, to, to do it. Many have done it. So she finally makes it to the apex, to the top of the mountain and when at the top of the mountain she realizes that the mountain is an extinct volcano huge rim you know like she said maybe several kilometers huge rim of an extinct volcano and around this rim stand humanity many many people men women of different colors different traditions different languages they all hold the hands together and look into the Look into the into the um, um, to the to, to the center to the extinguished volcano, and she joined them. She came to me with this dream. You know, this was her experience of our oneness. 
There was no, there was no uh, voice, there was no communicating. Usually with these dreams, there would be a voice, a big voice. Someone would say, this is so and so and, and so on. But this was nothing. And so she came to me with this dream and, you know, I said, well, you've, you've actually, you know, you reached the center, you've actually experienced that. At the center, you know, so many people say, or, you know, uh, if you're centered, you're alone, you're not alone. Because at the center is everything is interconnected through the center. We are all interconnected through that center. And if you, if you don't believe me, try this. When you're centered, when you're intuitive, think about someone. Think of, have them in your mind for a while, for, for you know, a couple of hours or half a day. I can guarantee you that that person is going to get in touch with you. Everything is interconnected. And so that's a feminine thing. That's, that, that is the sacred feminine through the energy. The energy is everywhere. Everything is holy and sacred. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. The experience of the numinous, coming to the numinous, coming to the sacred, having that mystic experience of the sacred, and it is healing. It is healing, and it's not only that it's healing because you have experienced the divinity, you know that it's something more within you, you are more than you are being told, but also the experience of the feminine can give you a direction in life. <coughs> like with Anne, you know, and Jules Cashford, they were told that uh, uh, they have to, their task is to rebuild the temple of the sacred feminine. Or, uh, you know, uh, Betty Kovacs, where she had the vision of the feminine walking through that landscape of her own uh, tradition, completely destroyed by patriarchy. So she took up the uh, task of being one of the more important voices <coughs> for the divine feminine. Okay? So that's all I wanted to talk to you about today, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.